Mark your calendars, because on this coming Friday, Good Friday, 
March 29th at 7 p.m. We'll be on the old side of victory baptizing candidates. Come on out and support. Let's have a little fun on Resurrection Sunday. Pull out your old school church clothes, hats, gloves, suits, and dresses. We're going to have a great time in the Lord and then immediately following, enjoy a home-cooked meal. Don't let Sunday be the last fellowship you have with the body of believers. Join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom for Bible study. This week, we'll cover Matthew chapter 28. Go grab your Go Be Great Victory Christian Assembly t-shirt just in time for Go Be Great Sunday on April 7th. Click on the QR code to make your purchase. Orders are due by Monday, March 25th. Hair for Everyone is offering a fully funded scholarship available to one individual who wants to pursue a career in cosmetology. Applications are due April 30th. Visit Hair for Everyone's salon or see Quintina Thomas for more information. Check out the scripture of the week. Let no one look down on your youth, but be an example. Set a pattern for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube page. Stay in the know. Got a few things to cover today. We've got some ground to make up for. Um, but I want to start off by saying a couple words before I start into the word, the, the actual sermon. Um, everyone's at, we, we, we're back. We're back from Kenya. Yes, I'm glad to see you too. Yes. Uh, and uh, But I want to, I really want to give you a little um, taste of the experience that we that we had in Kenya because of the fact that I think that it's important that we um, I I've come personally to realize that every time I visit Africa I come back changed I come I feel like I feel like something's happened to me um, and on the inside and and I I want to share that with everybody but it's hard to share it if it's just like sitting here and sharing it talking about it so I have a little video clip that uh, actually uh, we had um, from the church there. And there's so many things I could tell you about it, but the main thing I want to leave you with is that God is doing great things, you know what, and, and the world is really big. You know, I know it's small in terms of technology, but there's a lot out there in terms of interpersonal and, uh, and interactions that we have. And um, our experience has to go beyond just where we are, in my view, has to go beyond right where, where we are. I just feel like God put us here for a reason, and my reason is not just to live in Indiana, Pennsylvania. There's nothing wrong with living in Indiana, Pennsylvania, but but I think that there's <laughs> but there's but there's a lot more to life than what's in Indiana, Pennsylvania. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot more to life than what's in the United States. To be to totally honest, and uh, I'm learning that more and more since obviously you know my family lives overseas, and so I try to get over there as much as I can. There's a lot more to life than just here in America. So we're going to uh, I want to share this clip with you just for a couple of minutes. It's just a few minutes to watch and uh, hopefully learn from, and then we'll be back. All right, um, you ready for the Word of God today? Of course we are. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, it's Palm Sunday, you know, and. As a rule, over the last, I don't know, 35 or whatever, how many years I've been preaching, I've always said that I don't like to preach messages that match with the occasion. I just like to preach whatever and uh, let the occasion be whatever it is. So it's Palm Sunday, so it's like, you're going to preach a Palm Sunday message? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I am. I have a Palm Sunday message. <laughs> Sorry to say. So I'm beginning, as I get old, I guess I'm beginning to break some of my old habits and uh, we're going to we're going to preach a Palm Sunday message because I think that that's what God would say to us today. Um, and in the light of considering, you know, some of the stuff that I've experienced over the last couple of weeks, I think it's probably appropriate. In the book of John, chapter 12, going to be looking at John, the 12th chapter. So I would encourage you all to get your Bible app out or your Bible, your paper Bible. I hear pages turning over there. Brother Gary counts. He, he always. Yeah, come on. I can count on him to have his faithful paper Bible. And that's okay. Come on here. It's what you started off with and probably what you'll end up with. Amen. I'm okay with that. John, the 12th chapter. And we're going to just be reading a few verses starting at verse number 12. So we're actually at John 12, 12. Are you there? The next day, 
reading from the New King James. A great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him, and because they heard that he had done this sign, the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. I want to consider that passage and look at several parts of it today, and we're going to be looking at what really happened on Palm Sunday. What really happened on Palm Sunday? There is um, kind of a modern day thinking, and and I'm okay with this thinking, that that says basically Palm Sunday, you know, they laid the palms out and they waved the palms as if to allow him to enter into the holy city. And the significance of that I've heard preached, the the, uh, value or the purpose of that was essentially to allow us as God's people, when we get the palms, open our hearts and let the Lord come into our lives in a greater and new way. And that sounds nice. That's pretty Christian. I like it. It works. It's pretty good. But if you look historically, that's not exactly what was going on at that time. You see, the first thing we need to understand is that it is true that when they people wave palms when someone was coming. They wave palms because they were basically excited about the fact that the person was coming in. But in this case, it wasn't exactly the way that we thought. And before I tell you what it was, I'll say this. One of the reasons why we know it wasn't exactly one of the ways that, that we thought it was is because of the fact that these same people that were waving palms, Hosanna, come in, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Exactly one week later, they were saying, crucify him, kill him, do away with him. And Pilate said, who's a Roman, not even saved, said, well, since it's Passover, it is a tradition to give one prisoner back to the people. It doesn't have to be executed. We have this slimy guy, Barabbas, murderer, whatever, robber, stealer, whatever he was. And we have Jesus, in whom I find no fault. Which one would you like? Remember, these are the people, Hosanna, blessed is he. Which one do you want? This criminal or this guy that has no fault? What did they say? Give us Barabbas. Crucify the him. And so that's one of the reasons why I know that they, that something was off in their thinking. But beyond that, if you know a little bit about the history of this event, what they were expecting was their uh, uh, adoration and waving of palms had to do with the fact that they were really trying to usher in a new king of Israel. And I don't mean king like Jesus is the king of kings. I don't mean that kind of king. I mean a king like a political ruler. They were tired of going through the motions under the Roman government, and they always thought when they got a prophecy that said there's a king coming, they always thought 
that it had to do with a political deliverance. And so they were happy to have Jesus coming because they were thinking to themselves, at last we have the king that we've been looking for for so long. He's going to take care of everything. Now, one of the problems is, again, the church, just like today, if I can be a little controversial here, and yes, it's on the Internet, the church is in heavily, as far as I'm concerned, nationally, heavily involved in politics. Heavily involved in politics. They're always talking about what the Christian is voting for and, and what candidate appeals to the evangelicals. You ever heard that or am I just making this up? You've heard of it. And, and the church is, is right along with them. We are going to throw our support in a certain direction and everybody seems to think that God is really in charge of the elections. That's what people think. I thought that. I won't say the year, but it was many years ago. There was a candidate who was a Christian who actually was of a party that I was comfortable with. And I... <laughs> not comfortable with either one of them anymore. But anyway, that's another, another subject. Uh, the party that I was comfortable with. And, and so we were like, this is, must be the hand of God. And God said to me, wait a minute, you got to understand something. I never was all into that stuff. How do I know this? Because Jesus says, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but render unto God the things that are God. Don't get them conflated. Because they were trying to figure out, they say, hey, by the way, does your master pay taxes? Tell me all about this. How, how does he feel about the, the Roman government? And he said, listen, they're doing their thing and I'm doing mine. When he, also keep in mind that when the people first said, way back in the Old Testament, we want a king just like all the Gentile countries have kings. And what did Jesus say? What did God say? God said, listen, uh, he, well, he first he hesitated, like, I really wanted to be the king of your country. I really wanted to be the king of your nation. But since you want a king, I'll let you have one. And you'll see. Sure enough, I don't have to explain what happened. First king, Saul, God told me to do something. He did the opposite. Now here we are in 2024. God says do something. And what happens? Everybody's doing the opposite. And so if we think that God is all into politics, keep in mind that politics is man-made. And Jesus says in John chapter 3, Whatsoever is born of flesh is flesh. Whatsoever is born of spirit is spirit. Don't get them mixed up. Now, am I saying, okay, church, don't vote. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. You can vote if you want to or not if you don't want to. I'm not, it's not like you're going to go to hell if you do. And it's not like you're going to go to heaven if you don't. Or either other way around. I'm not against voting. I vote. I've been voting for a long time. But I also recognize that God is my king. I recognize that and I'm willing to say that publicly, privately, doesn't make any difference. Doesn't really matter who's in the White House, who's in the Congress, who's in the, in the Senate, who's in the House of Representatives, who's in Harrisburg. Doesn't make a bit of difference because I know who I serve. I pay my taxes just like everybody else. I put my vote in just like everybody else. I like certain candidates. I don't like certain candidates. But I know who's really in charge of this thing because my Bible tells me that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. That was a good spot to say amen. Thank you, Sister Cheryl. Okay. All right. All right. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. So these people were out here trying to make Jesus into a, a local king. And that's why they were so happy because that, that actually the word Hosanna is not a praise word. Did you know that? We sing Hosanna. But it's not a praise word at all. Do you know what the word Hosanna actually means? <laughs> okay. The word Hosanna actually means, Oh, Jehovah, please save us. 
That's what it means. It means, O oh, Jehovah, please save us. It's actually from uh, Psalms chapter 118 down around 24 and 25. You look at those verses, that's a Hebrew word, Hosanna. It's a, it's a kind of a combination of two Hebrew words. And it means, O oh, Jehovah, come and save us. So the idea is it's not like we're here to praise you. It's like we are looking for you to do something for us. That's what the idea was. So when they were out there waving the palms, Hosanna! Everybody's like, wow, they really praising Jesus, ain't they? Woo, look at that. But the truth of the matter is they were not. They were saying, oh, Jehovah, save us. Thank you that you've finally given us a king. And when they found out that he wasn't the kind of king that they wanted him to be, they killed him. And so I'm saying to us today, what we've got to do is recognize and realize that no one on earth, no election on earth, no interaction with politics, none of that is going to really get us into the place that God wants us to be in. What I want us to understand is our relationship with God is the only thing that's going to get us where we need to be. Beyond all the other stuff, well, certain politicians make it easier. Maybe taxes will go down. Maybe uh, the schools will improve. That's fine. That's good. I'm all for low taxes and improved schools. I'm all for more for less, okay? Those housing taxes are killing us. I'm okay with that. Fine. Lower the taxes. Fine, okay? But at the end of the day, I know where my help is. I know who I belong to. And I know where I belong. And I also understand that Jesus spent the majority of his time talking about one thing. The kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. Matthew calls it the kingdom of heaven. Mark, Luke, and John call it the kingdom of God. He talks about the kingdom of God over and over and over again. And the thing is, the more he talked about the kingdom of God, the more confused God's people got thinking that it had something to do with making it better here in Indiana County. The kingdom of God is in righteousness, joy, and peace. Where? In Indiana County? The scripture says, in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is something that is inside of us. And I, you, need to really press to become citizens of the kingdom of God. I don't care if you live in Blairsville. I don't care if you live in Nairobi. I don't care if you live in London. The kingdom of God is everywhere you go as long as you have the spirit of God on the inside and recognize and acknowledge and admit that God is my king. Not Trump. Not Biden. Not Kamala Harris. Or whoever Trump picks. None of them are my king. I'm going to, I don't really like that situation. Listen, four years from now, or eight, or ten, it's going to be somebody else. And you might like them or you might not. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's where I put my effort and energy and trust. And that's what I'm trying to get God's people to understand. Everything revolved around the fact that I want to be a kingdom citizen. And so that's what we're talking about when we talk about this Hosanna stuff. Okay, keep in mind, that's not what they were doing, but it's something that we can do. Now when you get your little palm and, and wave it around, okay, we're, we're going to give them that at the end, just like every other church, okay. Also, you need to know this, though. Let me tell you something about Palm Sunday. It wasn't until about four, anywhere between 400 and 800 years after Jesus was gone that Palm Sunday actually started being a thing. Yeah, it was man-made. Man did that. Right. Just like Merry Christmas. Uh-oh, he's preaching against Christmas. I'm going to send him back to Africa. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, I don't mean that. I'm just simply saying that those things were man-made. Just like next Sunday, you're going to say Happy Easter. I'm going to say Happy Resurrection Day because Easter is man-made. 
I, we're going to talk about it again next Sunday, okay? But anyway, the idea is we got to keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is man-made. And, and as a result of that, let me just say this, and I'm going to stop, Marcia, because we have a few more things we got to do. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay, well, since you said I can keep going, I'm going to Beyond that, much of what happens in the church really is man-made. And it's the, the, the tragedy of it is if we really start getting back to what God really intended, we look like we're going off because we've been so programmed to do, you know, it's like church has to be this, you know, worship has to be this, music has to be that. And if you go deviate from that, it's like something's wrong. I'm not going to go to your church anymore because you all are really weird. So as a result of this, as I close, I just want everyone to understand that the Palm Sunday tradition is fine. I'm not not against it, but I just want everybody to understand exactly what it was. And now when we look at palms, I'm asking us, when we look at the, the, the actual procedure of the palms and all of that, I want you to just, just say to yourself, Lord, just let your kingdom come, just like the prayer. Let your kingdom come in my life. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I, 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 I turn Palm Sunday over to you to say, let's let the Lord come into our hearts, not look for a political and a quick and easy solution or something that makes me more comfortable, like politics makes me more comfortable. Let it be whatever you want to do in my life, Lord. That's what I want to get done. Amen? Amen. All right, God bless you. Understands. He knows every one of our cries. Every one of our cries, he recognizes. He recognizes. We're going to pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you see those that are in your house. You see those that are standing at this hour. There are so many things, Lord Jesus. That we, are, we, are, we are acknowledging, we are recognizing, Lord, we are setting today aside as Palm Sunday, the Sunday that we welcome you in. But Lord Jesus, let us truly welcome you into our hearts. Let us truly, Lord Jesus, we, we're in church, but yet we're not in the presence of God. Some are, some aren't. Some are not, not, not where we need to be. It's okay. But the point is, Lord Jesus, we want to be everything you had called us to be. You have a purpose. You sent us here. You brought us here. You have allowed us to come here. You have enabled us to stand. You have enabled us to be in your house. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that even now, as we cry out to you, as we cry out, you recognize our cries and you respond accordingly, Lord Jesus. You recognize who we are as individuals and you have an individual connection with every single one of us. I thank you that your spirit is here and that, Lord Jesus, we acknowledge you as our king. You are the king, Lord Jesus. Despite what's going on around us, in, in, despite what's going on in the nation and in the world, you, hallelujah, you are the king lord jesus you are the living word lord jesus you are the son of god you are the almighty one lord jesus we just thank you we just thank you for moving by your power in the name of jesus let the grace of god lord jesus fall upon every household here every life lord jesus let us not continue this way this time next week let us be one week closer to you lord jesus in the name of jesus lord jesus thank you for your grace and your mercy that keeps us daily we thank you we praise you so much we praise you so much oh god come on somebody just tell him thank you from your heart hallelujah hallelujah tell him thank you from your heart from your heart from your heart so we're going to now we're going to partake in the lord's supper some known it some are, it's known as communion to some and this is something that the bible says you can have a seat something that the bible says that there's no specific time that you do it or a day that you do it. It just says as often as you do it. You do show the Lord's death until he comes again. So if you are a child of God and know that you're a child of God and there's nothing between you and God in terms of unconfessed sin, I'm going to read the scripture and then we're going to rejoice as we come and participate in these elements. Reading from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23. For I've received from the Lord, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man or let a woman examine themselves. And so let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he or she who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to themselves, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So what we're going to do is we, as we partake, before we do that, we're going to pray. And if you are know that you're saved, have accepted the Lord Jesus into your heart, you've been and our young people that have been baptized, this is an opportunity for you to actually celebrate what God has done for us. We do it this time of year in particular. And I'm going to pray that the Lord will transform these elements from a natural to a spiritual use. And we're going to all partake together once everyone has received their elements. So now I'm going to ask you to stand. And as I pray... If there's something that is unconfessed between you and God, he says, if you confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive. That's what he says. So we're going to go, yeah, and cleanse us from everything. That's right. And that's where we're going to go uh, with this. And so as I pray, I want you to feel free to talk to the Lord on your own, in your own way, and let whatever needs to be gotten out, gotten out, so that we could be free as we come forth today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time that you have set aside for us to partake in the Lord's Supper. Lord, we ask you to set us free from every chain, every weight, every sin, every burden, Lord Jesus, if there's anything that's between us, Lord Jesus, we thank you for casting into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for causing, Lord Jesus, even these elements to be sanctified and set apart from a natural use to a spiritual use. We celebrate what you've done for us. We appreciate what you've done for us. And we so are so thankful that you are, are, are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that sacrificed your life for our behalf. Thank you, God. These are all the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, it reaches. Mountain flow. So we're going to start with the bread. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take eat this too in remembrance of me. After dinner, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood and the New Testament, my the New Testament and my blood. Drink ye all of it. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. For me, oh, one day when I was lost, well, If you'd like to give electronically to Victory, you can do so in a number of ways. From your web browser on your computer, tablet, or phone, use the URL easytithe.com forward slash VCA. This will take you directly to our Easy Tithe giving portal. Choose the Give Now tab to enter the fund you'd like to contribute to and plug in the amount. You can also access the same portal by texting. Text the word GIVE to area code 724-204-1995.
As an alternative, you can download the dedicated Easy Tithe app on either the iOS or Android platform. You can also use Cash App. Here is our info, dollar sign Victory PJ. Lastly, you can access our Easy Tithe giving portal through our website, www.myvictory.org. Worship with us at 418 Church Street in Indiana, PA, or jump on our YouTube page for recordings of our Sunday services and weekly Bible study sessions. Stay connected. Visit our website at www.myvictory.org and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube page. We hope you've had an excellent worship experience today. Worship.